Backseat Becky up front is the 25th episode of the sixth season of Cheers. This is, of course, directed by the wonderful James Burrows. And as always, there will be spoilers from now as I go through the episode and share some thoughts. It's a beautiful episode, funny, very emotional at one point, and some pretty great character development. Obviously devastated that I've come to the end of season six, but I know there are some great things in store. The episode starts off with Evan Drake and Cliff mostly is analyzing him and we then cut to Rebecca saying that it's interesting that Mr. Drake always seems to dine at Melville's and he's currently in her office using her phone, which she's very excited about and he wants to talk to her and of course, the big question is, what could he possibly want to talk to her about? We don't want to have too long to find out, because he tells her he's moving to Tokyo. And Rebecca faints. And Sam's response, I told her to take that outside, really helps to sum up the fact that Rebecca's actions are getting pretty predictable. And she basically gets herself into these situations where she will constantly make a fool of herself. It's very much on brand with Rebecca. Sam is then comforting her in her office and he suggests throwing a goodbye party for Mr. Drake to give her another chance to tell him how she really feels. But Rebecca isn't exactly in a party mood. She says, and I quote, I will just dry up, crumble into dust and blow away, which I absolutely loved. But the delivery of that line was brilliant. But we cut to the party. It's a really nice atmosphere. Rebecca is very eye-catching. She's wearing a bright red dress. She looks fantastic. And she's going to talk to Mr. Drake, but Carla gives her some advice. And I feel like that scene could have gone a little bit better. Carla interrupts their conversation to give her some advice that basically just results in her saying, shave the moustache. They were definitely going for the comedy angle there, but I feel like I don't know exactly what I was expecting from that, but I think they could have done something a little bit different with it. But nevertheless, it's not too bad. Mr. Drake gets a drink. He tips Woody with some sports tickets because he's used up all of his, or his, his exchange, his American money, his dollars. And just as Rebecca is about to have a chance to talk with him, Mr. Drake's driver tells him that actually they have to leave now. And he leaves. And I was genuinely heartbroken for Rebecca. I knew it was coming. I've seen this before, of course. But that moment when he walks away and Rebecca realises that her one chance has gone is genuinely heartbreaking. But as is usually the case with Cheers, they swoop in with some more comedy as Al walks up to her and just kind of deposits his drink in her hands so he can go to the bathroom. And obviously Rebecca is devastated. And she starts to smash up drinks behind the bar but then Mr. Drake's driver comes in because Mr. Drake has left his top coat and Rebecca is just not interested anymore she tells Sam to tell him it's on the coat stand but then Sam says it's in the closet in the top coat closet and Sam leads him to the closet tells him it's in the way back of the closet and locks him in obviously pretending the door has accidentally locked and he gives Rebecca the driver's hat and <laughs> Sam asks if anybody can drive a, li a limo and Woody says, I can probably do it. And Woody gives Sam into trouble for not using direct address because he was clearly talking about Rebecca, which I thought was pretty entertaining. And he tells Rebecca, drive the limo, take him to the airport. You have one more chance to tell him how you feel. And she does it and she gets behind the wheel of the limo. And immediately as she sits down, she tells him she loves him. And then we realise the window is up, the window between, between the driver and the back of the limo. And she winds the window down. And before she gets a chance to repeat what she says, Mr. Drake tells her they need to pick up a woman who's going to be accompanying him to Japan. And it's very obvious that they are dating or in some kind of relationship. And the rest of the episode plays out beautifully, dramatically, unpredictably. Carla and Sam are behind the bar and Carla asks Sam what he's up to because she doesn't believe that Sam would help Rebecca tell Mr. Drake how she feels when Sam clearly wants to get with Rebecca. And we find out that Sam does have an ulterior motive, which I don't love, but we don't have to feel that for too long because Rebecca phones him 
and says that she needs his help. First of all, I love that Rebecca phoned Sam for help. And we kind of develop this a little bit. The next thing we know, Sam is helping Rebecca into her apartment. And we have a little bit of suspense, but not for too long. And then she says, thank you for bailing me out of jail. The suspense continues for another couple of minutes until we find out that, and I quote, she wrapped the company limo around the 7-Eleven. She explains that she was so upset about Mr. Drake and this other woman making out in the back of the limo. She just lost control, swerved and, well, smacked into a 7-Eleven. And Sam is walking around the apartment, closing the drapes, dimming the lights, putting on some music. It's clear what his ulterior motive is. And he sits next to Rebecca and she says something that I thought was so moving, but also kind of upsetting at the same time. And from that point, the rest of the episode, the emotions really change. And she says to him, you're the best friend I have in the whole world. For Rebecca to admit that to Sam, that's a big deal and kind of heartbreaking. And... Sam realizes he has to go because he cannot resist her. He knows what's going to happen. And then he tries. He says he will stay and resist his sexual urges. But as soon as he gets close to her again, he can't. He has to leave straight away, which I respect. And as I said, the scene before this, Sam was planning on taking advantage of the situation. And then immediately in the next scene, we see that actually Sam Malone has grown. He has matured and he's not willing to do this. And then he phones her from the payphone down the, downstairs in the building. And he's there for her as a friend, putting his own needs completely aside. And it's just, it's so beautiful. And I just, I'm getting emotional thinking about it because I love them. I love both of them so much. And the the development and growth we have with Sam is just so wonderful. And for Rebecca... To break down that wall that she puts up in front of her whenever Sam is around is just so wonderful to see. Yes, it is heartbreaking that Sam is her best friend, considering she doesn't love his character. But I do feel like we are chipping away at that and slowly getting rid of little bits of that. And honestly, it's beautiful. And then in true cheer style, we end with some comedy. As Rebecca says, you know what I've been through. You're not going to take advantage of me. She's trying to tell him to just come back upstairs because it's ridiculous to be talking from the payphone. And Sam's response is simply, check your bra. And she realizes that he's unhooked her without her even knowing. Basically saying, I am, I am different. I have changed. But also... I'm still Sam. So I like that nice bit of comedy to end things, but definitely a very, very moving, rather emotional episode and some gorgeous moments with Sam and definitely some beautiful moments with Rebecca. And it really does help to show that Rebecca has just completely lost it in a lot of ways and that whenever she gets a chance to do something, it doesn't go right. It won't go right. And well, I'll say no more than that. We do have some some interesting Rebecca moments Coming up, I'm looking forward to re-watching Season 7, but also devastated that Season 6 is over and done with. It's a beautiful season, very strong, great character development, even within the season itself. And Backseat Becky up front is definitely a solid way to end the sixth season.